President Obama speaking, addressing the country, not only the country, but also the world is watching this incident right now. The president mentioning uh, that he grieves the brutal murder, the horrific massacre that happened here in Orlando this morning. He's standing with the people, with the residents of Orlando, and he calls this an act of terror uh, out of hate. Uh, that person that uh, who we, we've, been, we've been talking about was filled with hatred, and the FBI is leading this investigation as of right now. They do not have uh, an exact motive on uh, on what caused this but we do know that that suspect did call 911 from here in Orlando pledging his uh, his allegiance to ISIS oh. and uh, the president mentioned that he did speak with Orlando Mayor Buddy mm -hmm. Dyer he has uh, spoken and that the FBI is leading this and they are focused right now at this point on Port St. Lucie to learn more about uh, what happens. The FBI is also asking anyone uh, in Port St. Lucie who may ha who may know who this person was, who may have any uh, uh, indication to know who he was, of any mm -hmm. any uh, meetings with him, and also anyone who was inside the club this morning to come forward to talk about what happened. This is a this is going to be a long process. They are just uh, skimming the top at, the, at this point, learning who these victims are. We will learn their stories over the next few days. Um, also, traffic in that area is going to be shut down for at least a couple days on Orange Avenue. It and then President Obama mentioned that, that the person who did this had uh, hate. And this was, this was very uh, methodical. This was very calculated when this began at uh, two minutes after two o'clock this morning when there was some sort of uh, gunfire exchanged mm -hmm. with that officer who was at Pulse. He went inside and locked the doors. And I'm hearing from people who have been there before mm. that there is a main door in front of the building. The back door that goes to the patio outside is always locked. So inside, if those doors, which the gunman, uh, according to reports, locked, that would trap the people inside. I, according to the Tampa Police Department on their Twitter page, they are sending uh, reinforcements here to the Orlando area to at uh, LGBT events. We know that there are some vigils tonight, uh, vigils tonight at 7 o'clock at Ember on Central, mm -hmm. uh, not too far from the News 13 studios, right here in downtown Orlando. Also, uh, there's going to be a vigil tonight at Lake Eola, and so we know that they are uh, reinforcing any law enforcement backups at, uh, at events, and, and the, in the gay community on Sundays, it's called uh, Sunday fun day where mm -hmm. so many of the LGBT members go out. Uh, it's the last day of the weekend right before Monday starts up again where they can you know blow off some steam and, and have some fun uh, and that's what they were doing last night. At and also Pulse. you know I want to say that um, and uh, you mentioned social media social media a huge presence people were relaying to loved ones and they were inside this club as this was happening uh, Pulse the, the club itself sending out a message while this was happening telling people to run away from the club and get out of there. Let's uh, let's tune, uh, turn things over to uh, Caitlin Jones who joins us right now live from the Web Center with the very latest on what social media is talking about with this. Caitlin. Yeah, Joel, and here's that post. And this morning, uh, in the middle of the night, I got texts from friends that said, now pulse. OMG, now Pulse, and I didn't, had no no clue what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Pulse's page, which you just saw Caitlin talk mm -hmm. about, it almost looks like it was a joke text when something that uh, Im impressive is sent out, talking about how people are running away from the situation, and that's happening in real time. Mm -hmm. Is it's uh, it's surprising to see, and that was surprising. And I briefly talked to my my folks as I was coming into work. And you hear about these stories, you, mm -hmm. you think it's I mean Orlando, the number one tourist city in the world, extremely. Uh, you have icons, you have Disney, Universal, Orlando is where so many people around the world, tens and tens and tens of millions come here to get away from their daily lives, to get away from their problems because of all the resorts and, and what there is to do to take your mind off of that. And the fact that this happens here uh, in our own backyard for residents of Orlando is just, it's hard to, it's hard to um, wrap your head around. It is, and that, everything that you just mentioned is exactly why the bad guys don't like all those beautiful things that you just mentioned right. and so they want to strike at the heart of a community and that's what they think what he thinks he did according to investigators but the strong community will move forward we will survive but what breaks my heart is as we're talking about checking into Facebook and at the very bottom of your screen the victim hotline if you're missing your loved one call it 407-246-4357 somebody may not be picking up the phone on the other line somebody is not going to be replying 
to your direct message on Twitter, on Facebook, because they're no longer with us. And that's going to be the very difficult part as we walk you through this and as this story evolves and you've been with us since, you know, the, the, the first shots were fired, how, you know, lives will be changed, emotions will be up and down as we see the faces and hear the names, which have not been released so far of the victims. And, and we've been hearing even in the past that nothing is too minuscule to report and to call. That is their job. That's why they're there. Uh, that's also why we pay taxes. This, this is one of the things. Mm -hmm. Let them know if you see something that may, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck, they're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. This is why you call in. Um, traffic in that area is going to be tied up regarding Orange Avenue, at least for the, uh, today and it looks like tomorrow. But let's check in right now with real-time traffic expert Ryan Harper, who has the very latest of what's uh, going on in that area on Orange. Ryan. Thank you, Joel. Uh, good afternoon here. You're taking a all right, Ryan, thank you very much. We're waiting for a press conference to happen in just a matter of moments with the Orlando Police Department. They have said that the, uh, the FBI is now heading this and uh, seeing what's going on. They're also focused on a house in Fort Pierce. They believe that's the, the gunman's apartment complex. We checked in with Greg Pallone not too long ago, uh, and it looks like a very active situation there. They're also looking at the shooter's father's home in Port St. Lucie, also an active scene there, trying to get more information because you heard President Obama uh, about 40 minutes ago. They do not know a motive. It might take a few days, possibly longer, uh, as mm -hmm. to what this is. But we do know that gunmen called 911 this morning uh, when this all was happening from Orlando and pledged his allegiance to ISIS and also made reference to the Boston Marathon bombers. And then, of course, uh, we knew, uh, we heard what had uh, happened and what had followed up after that. Oh, I've been reading. Right. Is it against the gay community? Is it against all? All of uh, Americans. Is it going to be classified as a hate crime? We read from the Associated mm -hmm. Press just about 20 minutes ago uh, that it sounds like that this uh, the shooter was upset because he saw two men kissing. Mm -hmm. So again, this is according to the Associated Press. This is going to be a part of the investigation. But is this going to be classified, you know, a, a, as a hate crime down the road? But this is this. There was so much to focus on, and one of the main things to focus on is the story and the stories of the 50 people who lost their lives. This morning, uh, it was 20, 30 injured. I ran out, did an errand, came back, and it had jumped to 50. And it almost seemed like a typo, or it almost mm -hmm. seemed like it wasn't it wasn't real. I'm going to tell you what happened um, in a minute, but we just received word that President Barack Obama has ordered that all flags across America be flown at half staff uh, until Thursday, I believe it's sundown. Uh, so that is, um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just telling my producer, thank you. Uh, flags flown at half staff um, to honor and remember all the victims. This is our life. These are the people that we do business with. And now, um, uh, you know, somebody has walked into an establishment uh, who is frequently by LGBT community members and not by the way it's a very popular nightclub for many folks who, who are not gay and now you've had this thing happen so it is shocking it is sobering and that is what our reality and especially on the heels of what we had here the shooting that happened over at uh, Plaza Live yeah. a couple of days ago you were I wasn't working for that uh, when the news broke it sent chills down my spine and now we're looking at this situation not related by the way we're told right. thus far to, yeah but that's the reason why so much media was here already and mm. they're here so quickly is because this mm -hmm. was a national story with the Christina Grimmie uh, from the sixth season of The Voice, um, focusing on the shooting that happened not too uh, not too far away, just a couple miles away from where this happened. Mm -hmm. uh, that was on Bumby, and this is on uh, Orange. We do want to mention what you talked about earlier with President Obama. You were talking about how uh, that this is this is a, a human thing. President Obama said that attacks on any American, no matter the ethnicity, the race, or the sexual orientation, is an attack on everyone, and that is. Uh, that is what we experienced going on 13 uh, hours ago right here, not too far from downtown Orlando. Um, our news director was already here when I got here, and so many others from our team were already either here or already at the scene, and there was just something in the air. You just knew. There was just some, some weird, just a weird vibe going on, and as soon as we started going live, it just kind of, the reality set in. When you see the dramatic images, you, you're probably going to hear from this guy, uh, Chris, I believe is his name, 
game. We've been playing his interview throughout the morning. Yeah. He was wearing a hat and his story of running out of there and then taking off his bandana and pressing it against someone's wound who had been shot in like the back. Turnic, right. Mm -hmm. And then so many others. There's so many stories. So if you feel like this is just you're being bombarded with a lot of information, there's only more that's going to come your way because people are in shock. They're in disbelief. They were talking a few of them, but there'll be more, many more stories coming out in the next few days. And this, this right here, the cell phone saving so many people's lives with how quickly people are tweeting. Pulse sent out a tweet mm -hmm. uh, or, and also a Facebook message of what was happening live in real time telling people to uh, run out. And this has really been uh, the number one thing talking about in social media, not only here in the United States, but also around the world. Let's check in right now with Caitlin, who has the very latest of what's happening in the world of social media regarding the story. Caitlin. Well, Joe, first of all, I want to point out that a lot of people are coming in from around the world and um, the social media gives them a tool to be able to do something and help out. You can see this GoFundMe page has now reached more than $200,000 in just four hours. 